what I'm gonna do to start is uh, live coding, which always works great, right? Um, so I'm gonna try to show uh, kind of the process you're gonna have uh, in the afternoon to build these uh, modules to fetch data with the uh, streams. Uh, and so the result will be something like this. Uh, um, so a tool that gets data from uh, a resource. Um, so I'm going to start coding, and you can follow um, on your terminal as I'm doing and try to do the same. Um, I'm going to try to keep it very simple first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a readable stream that's going to fetch data from somewhere. So I'm going to use the module uh, request to do that. So this module, um, I'll provide a URL and I'll fetch something. Um, so the output from this model is going to be binary data. So in Node, it's uh, the buffer class. And it's coming in chunks of 16 KB, which is the default buffer. And then I'm going to pipe that to a writable stream, which is going to be just the standard out. Uh, so I'm going to try to do just that and see how this works. So, so first, I created a folder. Um, and I created an empty file, .js. And OK, so I'm going to need request. Uh, so I need to install it. It's already installed, but I'll show how you do it. So inside the folder, you do npm install request. Whoops. Maybe a bit louder. <laughs> Maybe just a bit, a bit louder. louder. So you do npm install request uh, in the folder you're going to work on. And npm will install that module in a folder called node modules. So there's here a folder named node modules. Uh, another useful thing you can do is uh, to avoid having to reinstall these dependencies all the time. When you start a new project, you could do npm init. And you do enter. And it's going to ask you a bunch of questions uh, to create a configuration file. So I'm just saying yes to everything for now, because I don't care. It says yes. And so now I have a package JSON file. Um, and that file has the configuration of my dependencies. So now I did, I did npm uh, install request. But I could have done npm install request save. And so that will save that dependency on package JSON, which means next time if I need to reinstall these dependencies, I can just do npm install, and it will install all the dependencies on the package JSON. So that will be very helpful to if we need to uh, restart this or uh, move to another machine. Um, another useful information is, uh, so when you install something with npm, it installs in your folder, in that uh, node modules folder, the dependency. But you can also install la uh, modules globally. So if you wanted to install bionode ncbi, you do by npm install Pyronode NCBI dash G for global. But that only means you'll be able to use Pyronode NCBI as a command line tool. You won't, uh, you won't be able to use it as a library. You still need to install it locally uh, in your folder for your project. So you only do this when you want to install something um, for the command line. So one thing I know is going to be useful, so I should probably install already, is a JSON parser for the command line. So this one, I can do npm install json-g, and it will be installed globally. So it won't be a library, but it will be a command line tool that I'm going to need um, during this tutorial. Um, did everyone follow up until now? So I have requests. So now I'm going to load that module in my code. So I do var um, request. Uh, equals require request. Okay, so I have request. Now I need to fetch data from somewhere. So if you go to the Bionode hack organization, you have a bunch of um, repositories with some information. Um, so these might be uh, possible modules to create in the afternoon, uh, and you can organize around uh, these modules as uh, groups. And feel free to use another, uh, create a new one if you want. Um, 
But I'm going to look into this one, the Bionode EVA, which is the European Variant Archive. So if I click here, there's a README, and there's already a bunch of information uh, about it, where uh, you can get the data, what kind of data, things like that. For now, I'm just going to take the first link, uh, just for demonstration purpose. I'm going to copy... Is it this one? Yeah, this one. I'm just going to copy this link. And now I'm going to give this to request. So usually the way you can use request is you, uh, you call it and you give the URL. And then you can give a function, a callback, which will get the result. And then you can do whatever you want with the results you can do. Uh, actually, it's, it will be something like this. Uh, requ uh, response, request, uh, an error. So it will give you an error if there's an error, and the response and the request. And then you can use that. But the request module is already a stream. So I'm actually going to take advantage of that and use it um, with the pipe method. So I'm just going to do request URL, and then I'm going to pipe to process standard out. Just that. Hopefully that will work. So if I do node eva, which is my file name, I get the JSON. So it's working. If I want to explore this JSON, figure out, because I can't really read anything here and see what's going on. I can pipe it to the JSON tool that we just installed, and it gets nicely formatted. I can also pipe it to less if I want to scroll it. And so I can see that there's a bunch of information, API version, error. The only thing I care is the response, and which is an array, and inside response, there's a result, which a bunch of... Uh, studies. So that's what I actually want. So I can filter that if I want. I can do JSON response. It's an array and I just want the first item. So I put zero and result. I think. So I get the array with just the IDs. And if I put another zero, I get the first one. So maybe people change it and ask. Hmm? Yeah, if everyone is following. Everyone, did everyone got here? No? Ooh. Romantic? Very romantic. Is it better with the visibility? Hmm? Yes. That's definitely better. Yeah? Okay. So guys, feel free to interrupt. So we say, can you please stop for a bit, you know, like ask a question and so on. So I think it's good if we all try to follow this because it will help in the what afternoon. we follow in one hour or so. So feel free, like, if you, I mean, you know, like whatever question you have, just ask and uh, we'll, we'll try to answer it, right? So try, try to, to, to follow, uh, to have, <laughs> to follow Bruno and to, to be on the same pace. And maybe going a bit slower. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, so what we did is we installed the request module with npm install request in our folder. We created an empty file, which is this eva.js. Inside the empty file, we're requiring the request. We're giving a URL as a string. And then we're doing a pipeline. So we're using the request module, giving it the URL, and then using this pipe method, which I'll explain um, better later, to pipe what I'm getting from request directly into the standard out. And the URL I got was just the first one here. So when you go to the Bionode hack, Bionode Eva. 
there's a uh, I got this one steps to metadata the first URL So during the, the the afternoon, you want to make this flexible enough that you can use. Uh, so, for example, here I can see in this URL that I'm fetching only information for humans, so Homo sapiens, and the GRCH37 is the genome reference version. So ideally, we want to be able to specify other uh, species, but for now, I'm just R coding everything just to keep it simple. Yeah. Can I do sudo? It's the JSON parser. They can't install it globally. So if it's if it's if it's already there, you can just use it. <laughs> So then you can do something like this to run the script and to filter it to the JSON tool. So I'm, I think I'm gonna. Is everyone kind of here? No, not really. Yeah. No. So if I just do JSON, so I'm gonna do JSON and less. And I get this object. So it's a J JavaScript object, has several properties. And by looking at it, I see that the property response has an array. It only has one object inside. And that object um, has uh, a property result, which is another array. And that array has several objects with study ID and the study name. So I could use all this information, but right now, let's say I just care about the results. And so that's what I'm doing when I do this. I'm filtering uh, what I get out of uh, the JSON. So this is nice just when you're trying to understand what these APIs give you, to try to explore the data and figure out what's relevant, what's not. Uh, so you can build uh, the module. But so here in my code, I'm not doing anything yet. I'm just piping what I get from the, the JSON object directly to the standard out. So I'm going to try to do something uh, fancier. And so I'm going to start explaining it, because you might need to install some modules. So. Um, while people are still figuring out this part, it might be helpful for others to start installing the modules, I think. So this is what we did. Now, here's the solution. So you can copy-paste it. If you go to the Gitter channel uh, and you get the PDF, you have the solution here, too. So you can just try to catch up this way um, if you have some typo in your code or something. You just use a different URL? No, I use the same. But um, what I did is I broke it into a, a, an object. So I don't know if I can zoom in. Not too late. Anyway. So what I did is I'm using the URL uh, module, which comes with Node, so you don't need to install it. And then I broke 
to organize my code, I broke the, the, that long URL uh, into something more meaningful. So I have the protocol defined. I have the host, which is ABI, the European Bioinformatics Institute. The path name, which is EVA, the database, web service, REST API version 1, metadata, studies, list. And then I have a query, so the search, which is species equal homo sapiens. Uh, so this way, my code is cleaner. But now I have an object, and I cannot give that to request. So what I have to do is uh, first put it back as a URL. So I use the URL.format, and I give it an object, and I'll get back a string. And then that's the string I'll give to, to request. So th this is just to, to make the, the code cleaner. Because then I can reuse this object and change uh, the query, change the, the, the path. Yes? And how does one get help for a function? Is there a man page or something? Yeah. No, no, can you submit the... Is it... So usually to get the documentation, you, because all these things are on GitHub, you just go to, you search for this on GitHub. Or on the NPM, when you go to the NPM page, so I can show you, um, if I go here, NPM. Let's say I want to know how to use request. I think it's, I usually don't use it. Yeah, you can just do this. But to get the, like the, if you're looking for the node core documentation, just go to the website, um, to the API. Um, so nodes. So here you have everything. So if I look for URL here, URL format, and I give it an object. So here's the documentation. If I want to know how to how the URL object should look like, I just look for it up. So you, the URL object has uh, several properties. So the host name, the port, the path name. Search, so you can use all these uh, to create the, the the object. So this is the core when you when you're using a module that's already uh, that comes with Node. When you're using a module from the community, you go on npm, and what you see here is actually the GitHub README. Um, so you sometimes you can just skip and go straight to GitHub. Um, and so here you can see how to use. Uh, request. So if I wanted, for example, to write to a file, I could do something like this. Request the URL of a picture and then pipe to a stream, um, a file stream to create a file on the system. But so, coming back to this, so this was the solution. Uh, you can get this PDF on the GitHub channel um, if you want to copy paste. I'll put also the code on the on the GitHub. Um, did everyone follow up until now, or Shall I continue? So. This is not a very interesting module because it doesn't do anything that a simple download would do. So let's say I want to uh, manipulate that JSON object and do something to it. So I want to use a transform stream to do that. But I'm going to have a problem because um, I want to manipulate the JSON object and do things like filtering or look at properties. But what I'm getting from requests is actually a buffer. Uh, so I'm getting chunks of data 
not a JSON object. So I need to fix that. So I, what I'm going to do is use a JSON parser. So I'm going to use JSON stream to parse um, the string that comes from request, the, the buffer into a, a, an object. But that won't work um, too because I'm getting chunks of 16 KB. So I might get an object cut in half. Um, so the solution to this is to use split. So split can split a buffer according to something, um, a character. Um, if, you, if you just use the, the by default, just split, it will split by new lines. So I know the API is giving me one object per line. So I can use split to concatenate the buffers until I have one line. And then split will push downstream to the parser, which will turn that into an object. And then finally, I can use it in my transform uh, stream to play with it. So this is what I'm going to try to do now. And the solution is on the <laughs> PDF. Let's see. OK, so I'm going to need, I'm going to need JSON stream. So var JSON stream equals require JSON stream. Now, that means I need to install it because it's not, uh, it doesn't come with node. So again, in my project, I do npm install. Or if you want to save keyboard, you just do I um, save JSON stream. Now I have JSON stream installed. That's good. But I need split too. I need var split equals require split. So let's do that too. NPM is clear. NPM install save split. So for every dependency, you have to do this. If you do the save, then next time you just need to do npm install. In the slides, you have split two. Yeah, so split one should work, right. but. Um, I think actually I should be using split two because the difference split two is using version two of streams. And so I'll explain what is the difference between version one, two, and three uh, later. Uh, for now, don't worry too much about it. But ideally, you want to use version two or version three. What, what version of node are you using? Six something, I think. <coughs> You can, so if you have, to manage node versions, I don't know how, how it's set up on the, um, Ruben knows how it's set up on the. 6.3. Six, 6.3, three? okay. But if you wanted to do on your computer, one thing you can use is the N module. So you would do npm install globally N. So just N. Um, if you're using a Mac, you can just also do brew install N. That will also work. Once you have the end command, you can do nls, and you get all the versions of Node that are available. So then you can specify by number which version you want, and you can just do um, nstable to get the latest stable. If you want the latest latest, you do n latest. So just doing that, you'll get uh, stable Node.js. I, I find it's the easiest way to manage Node versions. But there's a bunch of other tools to do the same thing. Sometimes you might require on Linux or other systems to do sudo uh, because of permissions. So, OK. I'm also going to need a transform stream. So I will explain how you create. So here I'm just using streams that are already made. I'm not creating anything new. But I want to create a new one to do something. And um, I'll explain how you create streams. But 
for now, the easiest way is to use an abstraction, a module called true. So I'm going to do var true equals require true to because it's using streams version 2. So you need to install this module also. It's crashing the, the page. If you so also well if you if you have a Mac you can just do brew install n if you have homebrew. If you don't have homebrew, uh, it's also very easy to install. So homebrew is a package manager for Mac. So you just Google homebrew and it's a one line install. Homebrew this one. You might need to have um, some development tools on your Mac. So once when you run this, it might ask you to install more tools, common line tools, and things like that. But if you're doing already development, you should have Xcode and all those things installed. Um, so to install Homebrew, just copy paste this into a terminal, and you'll get Homebrew. Once you have it, you can do brew install n, and then you can do n stable, and you get Node uh, on your local machine. And if you go to the discussion repository, I think there are also some instructions. So, yeah, so you have here the instructions for Mac, for Ubuntu. And if you know how to use Docker, you can also try to to use a Docker container. So this is on the final hack discussions. Yeah, I think it should. Yeah, I think it should have. Trying to find an alternative. But Did you bring some of your stickers today to mm -hmm. your project where it's supposed to make it I've put um, a few on the table, oh, and um, but I have a bunch of others. I'll, yes. In the break, I'll put them uh, on every table. Um, Should I continue? Yeah. I think they're having some issues running Node. <laughs> On your computer? <laughs> <laughs> On their computer? On their computer, yeah. And I think the, the Docker stuff is crashing. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. So maybe some. Uh, maybe we can think about 10 more minutes mm. to go and then we move to the plan and then okay. we so can think so think I'm going to try to what, what you can show them yeah. really relevant for today. Okay, so I'm going to try to continue.
otherwise um, we'll be behind schedule. So now that I have all these uh, modules, I can use them. So first, the problem was I needed to get the buffer that comes from uh, request into uh, buffers of lines. So I'm just going to do pipe. So what comes out of request, I'm going to pipe to split. Just like that. So now I have a buffers uh, made of one line. So I can now pipe that into Johnson stream uh, parse, the parse method. And now I can pipe this. So I'm just going to try to see everything is working. No, it won't work because now I have an object and I cannot pipe an object to to the terminal. So I would have to do Johnson stream uh, stringify to put it back as a string to pipe to the to the terminal. But I want to do something with this. So I'm going to I'm going to create my own stream. So the way I do this I just do var my filter um, and it's going to be I'm going to use true and in this case, I'm not going to use buffers. I'm going to use objects. Uh, so I want to, an object stream. So I adjust to this object. And I have to provide a function that will uh, manipulate that object. So I'm going to call that function transform. Or I could call it filter if I wanted anything. So now I can put this here too. Pipe my filter. OK. So. What, how do I create a stream now? So I'm giving, giving a function to this, uh, a, a transform function to this uh, stream. So I'm, I have to do <coughs> var filter equals function. And what it's going to get is an object from upstream that came from um, mm -hmm. the Johnson stream parse. I'm going to get an encoding, which I don't care for now. And I'm going to get a callback that I'll, I should use once um, I've processed my chunk of data. So I'm going to call this callback next. And so now what I can do is um, I'm not going to do anything to the object. I'm just going to let it through. So I'm going to do this push object. So this will send the object I got. Uh, downstream into the stream queue and since I'm done with it I'm gonna call the the next callback so that means I finished so ah, actually I still have the problem that I'm pushing an object to the next stream which is a buffer stream so what I have to do here is Johnson stringify the object so now my object is back to a string so if I run this, I should still get exactly the same thing. So not very exciting. Whoops. Object. So I got an error, so I'm just going to try to figure out what's going on. So if I do console log object, yeah. Ah, maybe. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
this no but I changed the name here so if I do callback should be the same this push is right I'm giving I think I'm not sure Johnson stream parse. What? Yeah. Well, I guess I have a stupid typo somewhere. See if this works. Object caller. Function like this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So I, I, I was passing a variable here. So I, I was instead of a function. Right. So mm, it wasn't working. So I need to pass a function here that gets called uh, to the source stream. So that's where the bug was. Thanks. So now. I could do something useful with this. So I could do, let's say, object um, object dot result. I think it was a response. Zero result. So I can do something like this. Our result equals this, and then I can do results for each filter and push, then function filter and push we'll get one result and so I'm gonna split my results and because I'm calling a function I need to do this trick so I need to do var self equal this to keep the context 
otherwise I'll lose the context and then I do self here so this should give me a bug uh, result. good so now I'm getting for each object that was in the array that's what's getting piped out of this pipeline. So I could do something like um, if result study name match, let's say 1000 genomes project. Then only then push. And so I get two results. So this is how I implemented a filter stream. Um, so you'll get access to this code, so you can try to do the same thing in the afternoon. Uh, I'll try to quickly move on. So how much time do I have? Five minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to show quickly um, another thing. So one thing that might be a bit hard to understand with streams uh, is how back pressure works. So how streams regulate the flow of uh, data. So I have a code, um, example code for that. So I'm going to go quickly through it. So here in this code, what I'm doing is I'm installing a bunch of dependencies. I'm cleaning the terminal because I'm going to uh, be doing some fancy stuff with the uh, progress bars. I'm going to do 20 jobs, so I'm just going to create 20 empty objects and pipe them to the stream. And I'm going to uh, have a counter that keeps track of progress as the data goes through my streams. And I'm going to have a fast stream and a slow stream. And this here is just uh, the progress bars. All the progress bars will be rendered in the terminal using uh, uh, a module called multimeter. So the relevant code for this is here. So I'm going to create a read stream using a module called streamify and I'm going to give it uh, an array. So an array of empty objects. That's going to be my read stream. And then I'm going to have two streams, the fast and the slow one. Then I'm going to pipe the source to the fast to the slow. And because the slow isn't piping to anything, if I want to process the whole data, I have to call resume to make it read the whole data. Otherwise, it will stop uh, as, the, as it stops fetching data from the upstream. And so the stream is going to be, a, again, a transform stream. And I'm passing an option. I'm passing this option called high watermark. So that's the size of my buffer. The default is 16, but I'm going to play with it so you can see what happens when I change it. And so then I have my transform function, object encoding next, just as I did in the previous example var self to keep track of the uh, context. And what this uh, stream is going to do is going to execute a um, command line tool, sleep in this case. So it's going to sleep for one second. It's the only thing it's going to do. Then it get, uh, that tool give me error, standard out, and standard error. But I don't care about it. I just increment the counter once I'm done uh, waiting. And I push the empty object to the next stream so it can process it. And that's it. And the slow stream does exactly the same thing, but it sleeps two seconds instead of one second. So now I'm going to show what happens. So you'll have access to all this code, so you can play with it uh, later. So if I do node back pressure, what you see on the top is the fast stream processing jobs. So it's processing one job per second, and the slow stream, one job per two seconds. So you see the, the slow stream is lagging behind, but that's fine because I have a buffer of 16, so the fast stream doesn't care. Uh, it's just moving forward. And when it finish, the other one will still be processing stuff. Now, if I change the buffer size, so let's say I put four, four objects. If I run it again, so the fast stream starts going forward, but it will only be 
only be four objects uh, advance, in advance uh, of the slow stream. So if he, he, when it gets to a head, it will stop and wait for the slow stream to catch up because it knows the buffer is only four, so you cannot push any more um, data. So you can, that's how streams work, and that's why uh, um, they're really cool to process the data. So I actually, if I change to one, what will happen is the fast stream will go at the same speed as the slow one. So it does one, and then the other does one, and then it does one, and the other does one. So even though the fast stream is fast and only has to wait one second, it pauses to let the other one downstream finish what it's doing before pushing data. So you'll have access to this code and you can play with it. It's just sometimes a hard concept to grasp. So I wanted to show this way. I can um, now just quickly um, go through the concept of streams. I have some animations, maybe two minutes. So I wanted to show you how you code streams uh, because that's what you're going to do in the afternoon. But I know for some of you this might be a bit hard and a bit abstract. So I'm going to try to show how these concepts actually work. So streams. Are